Welcome to Clinical Minute. Gina is a 28-year-old nulla gravida and long-term patient at your pharmacy. She has had rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, for four years. The RA symptoms have been stable on methotrexate and infliximab for 18 months. Gina was married recently. When she told a friend she wanted to become pregnant soon, her friend encouraged her to buy prenatal vitamins and start taking them before getting pregnant. Gina comes to the pharmacy and asks you which prenatal vitamins to purchase. What do you do? The effects of pregnancy on rheumatoid arthritis have been observed for decades. Studies show that rheumatoid arthritis often improves in women during pregnancy, but no single mechanism explains the improvement. In about two-thirds of women, RA disease activity, measured by validated instruments, decreases during pregnancy. However, there are no clinical parameters or lab tests that are predictive of an individual's RA course during pregnancy. Many women experience symptom flares postpartum. In terms of pregnancy outcomes, there is an increased risk of preterm delivery and offspring that are small for gestational age among women with greater disease severity during early pregnancy. When considering preconception and perinatal care, the treatment plan must balance the risks to the woman and the pregnancy of leaving RA untreated during pregnancy versus the risks of the medications to the fetus. In many ways, the most critical period for a woman with RA who desires pregnancy is the preconception period. The conventional disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMARDs, that are teratogenic, like methotrexate, must be stopped prior to conception. However, at the same time, the inflammation associated with active disease must be halted. For this reason, clinical providers should discuss family planning and the need for planned pregnancies with all women who have RA and are of childbearing age. All women with RA who wish to become pregnant should be referred to a rheumatologist. Patients who are trying to conceive or are pregnant or breastfeeding should consult with their pharmacist and other providers about which RA mediations are safe. The drug selection should be based on an agreement between the woman and her clinical care team, including her rheumatologist and obstetric team. Some women stop taking RA drugs to get pregnant, while others use medication alternatives. Obstetricians and midwives should consider consultation with a clinical pharmacist and a referral to a maternal fetal medicine specialist to help with medication assessment. Routine components of preconception care, such as smoking cessation counseling and initiation of folic acid supplementation, are also important. When considering RA treatment during pregnancy, it is important to strike a balance between the risk of disease progression without treatment and the risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes with treatment. The following slides are based primarily on expert guidelines published by the European League Against Rheumatism. Note the color code for the pie charts, which is listed on the tables, is as follows. Blue. I would recommend the drug in the same way as if the patient was not pregnant. Yellow. I would only recommend the drug if I feared at least moderate disease activity in its absence. Red. I would only recommend the drug if I feared at least severe disease activity in its absence. Black. I would never recommend the drug in pregnancy. This table includes the most common non-biologic RA agents. Most human reports with sulfasalazine therapy during pregnancy have not been associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. Approximately two-thirds of experts recommend its use up to two grams per day in the same way as if the woman was not pregnant. Hydroxychloroquine is also commonly used throughout pregnancy because with almost 500 exposed pregnancies, it has not been associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. This table includes the most common biologic RA agents, TNF-alpha inhibitors.
Experience with these agents is limited, but preliminary data on TNF-alpha inhibitors is promising. Placental transfer is low, and a clear pattern of malformations has not been established. Most providers reserve these agents for patients expected to experience at least moderate disease activity without them. Two-thirds of providers report reservation of golemumab for patients with severe disease, most likely due to insufficient data on its safety during pregnancy. Providers have mixed views on how long TNF-alpha inhibitors should be continued during pregnancy. Based on the half-lives of these agents in the non-pregnant population, you would expect the vast majority of the drug to be cleared in 25 days for etanercept and 10 weeks for adalimumab, sertilizumab, and infliximab. However, there is a case report of a patient who discontinued adalimumab 21 weeks prior to delivery who still had measurable maternal and umbilical cord serum concentrations at the time of delivery. This suggests that the pharmacokinetics of these drugs might be altered during pregnancy. This table includes the most common biologic agents that are not TNF-alpha inhibitors. There are insufficient data available regarding these agents during pregnancy to determine the risks. Expert opinion is that these agents should be reserved for the most severe cases of RA or not used at all. Abitacept has been associated with some congenital malformations, and rituximab has the potential to cause neonatal B-cell depletion. This table includes other RA agents. There are concerns with the use of the classic and COX-2 selective NSAIDs in both the first and third trimesters. Prednisone is associated with increased glucose concentrations, as well as a very small increased risk of oral clefts. Even so, two-thirds of experts continue to use it as in the non-pregnant population, and the other third reserve it for those expected to experience moderate disease without it. This slide summarizes the last few slides and lists the medications often used in pregnancy. You advise Gina to avoid pregnancy until speaking with her rheumatologist and gynecologist about her interest in becoming pregnant. You tell Gina that methotrexate causes birth defects and, ideally, she will discontinue the medication before conception. However, you also advise Gina not to stop the methotrexate before speaking with her rheumatologist. You explain to her that research has shown mixed results with respect to the effects of folic acid on the efficacy of methotrexate for RA, and that some women require higher methotrexate doses when they take folic acid. You explain that she will need prenatal vitamins with folate to have a healthy pregnancy, but that she should delay their initiation until she speaks with her rheumatologist so she does not experience a symptom flare before the rheumatologist has a chance to adjust her medication. You also suggest consulting with a maternal fetal medicine specialist during pregnancy because she is taking infliximab. Gina expresses concern about RA symptoms returning if she stops the methotrexate. You assure her that other arthritis medications are safe during pregnancy, and that her rheumatologist is likely to change her medication before she gets pregnant. She asks, how long will I have to wait before I can try to get pregnant? You tell her that she should be off methotrexate for three months before conception, and tell her to see her provider soon so she can get started on her prenatal vitamin with folate prior to conception. Gina asks, what about my infliximab? You also tell her that although data are limited, infliximab does not appear to cause malformations and will most likely be continued when she gets pregnant. One year later, Gina stops by the pharmacy. She is very excited and lets you know that she is 12 weeks pregnant. Her symptoms are well controlled on infliximab and hydroxychloroquine. The plan is to stop the infliximab at week 20. Gina tells you she is concerned about being able to breastfeed if her RA symptoms flare postpartum. How do you counsel Gina? 
This table includes the most common non-biologic agents in lactation. Hydroxychloroquine is considered to be compatible with breastfeeding. Most experts advise using hydroxychloroquine the same way for lactating and non-lactating patients. Sulfasalazine also has a relatively low risk during lactation, with a few case reports of diarrhea in nursing infants. Most experts advise lactating patients to use sulfasalazine the same way they would when not lactating, especially for those expected to have moderate disease without it. Methotrexate and leflunamide are generally avoided. This table includes prednisone and classic NSAIDs, as well as COX-2 selective NSAIDs. Note that classic NSAIDs and prednisone are generally considered safe during lactation at standard doses for RA treatment. In summary, ibuprofen, prednisone, sulfasalazine, and hydroxychloroquine are most likely safe during breastfeeding. There are limited data on TNF-alpha inhibitors, but they have minimal transfer into breast milk and are most likely safe to use during lactation. Data about methotrexate are controversial. It has very low transfer into breast milk, but most experts still consider it contraindicated during lactation. Other biologics have limited transfer, but have not been well studied. You let Gina know that many RA medications are most likely safe when used when breastfeeding, including ibuprofen, prednisone, sulfasalazine, and hydroxychloroquine. Preliminary data are promising for TNF-alpha inhibitors, suggesting they have limited to no transfer into breast milk and are most likely safe during breastfeeding. Gina comes to talk with you once again with her newborn infant. She tells you that after discussion with her rheumatologist, she restarted infliximab right after delivery and continued hydroxychloroquine using ibuprofen when needed. The plan is that when she completes breastfeeding, the rheumatologist will substitute methotrexate for hydroxychloroquine. Gina tells you that she's heard that RA symptoms often flare postpartum, and she is concerned about breastfeeding while taking RA medications. How do you respond? You tell Gina that RA symptoms commonly flare one to two months postpartum and that restarting infliximab and continuing hydroxychloroquine should help. You explain to her that hydroxychloroquine, infliximab, and ibuprofen have very low levels in breast milk, so her infant will not be exposed to very much of the drug. You let her know that many RA medications, including her current medications, are commonly used during breastfeeding. A great deal of information exists on the use of hydroxychloroquine and ibuprofen during lactation, and they are considered compatible with breastfeeding. You explain that infliximab has not been around as long, so there is not as much information, but the information available says that very little goes into the breast milk, and the part that gets into the breast milk is processed safely in the baby's stomach. It does not appear to cause any adverse effects in nursing infants. You successfully counseled Gina on managing her RA symptoms during pregnancy and lactation by recalling the following key points. Some mainstay medications for RA treatment are teratogenic. It is important to achieve disease control prior to conception. Planned pregnancy to allow for medication withdrawal is critical. Effective contraception and preconception planning are essential. Certain medications can be safely used in pregnancy and lactation. 